and it was like a it's like three to five or three hundred. I to think we're working now. Oh wow. Yep, we're working now. There's okay. Just for the air. Hey well, everyone on the stream. Before. Sorry, uh, my 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 uh, streaming streamlabs desktop decided it hates me and decided just like right at the end of the intro, those beautiful credits just froze. Like, ah, screw you. So we're already off to a great start between that and the fact that my sinuses got destroyed by the uh, dry Arizona air for being down there. So I'm like all kinds of stopped up. This is going to be a great session. But at least we've got these lovely four gentlemen. How you doing, guys? Good. I mean, even though the technology Good. doesn't like you, we do. Mm. Oh, that's I need it. Least... Thank you so much, Chris. You're just a wonderful human being. At least most of the time. <laughs> oh, I know. I can be a gigantic flaming asshole a lot of the times, but at least you love me. So. Okay. Anyhow, hey, welcome back to Star Trek Last of the Line. Uh, all right. So brief recap. Two weeks ago, we had arguably the most fun session we've had, or at least I've had yet. Just total improv. The, the the legend of the storm lords i you need to go back and watch that if you've not seen it it has nothing to do with the overall plot at all but it was like the best and worst parts of an 80s like i, I don't know like coming of age movie it was amazing oh fun fact <laughs> yes uh today, today while i was looking through prestige classes that are divi like divine prestige classes in D&D 35 um, I found one called Stormlord. <laughs> Ooh. Well, right. we know what we got to do now. Uh. <laughs> I kind of go through all my 3.5 stuff because I have a lot of 3. Point... I have a full. I used to have so much 3.5. Anyway, we're not, we're not doing I'm that. I'm right never now. getting rid of this my is, 5. Yes, this is not D&D. You know? &D. This is uh, Star Trek The Role. Space D&D. &D. So. Completely different. All right, so yeah. let's, let's step back a whole other week to the previous session that was plot relevant. So in that one, let me just read over what my notes were for that. Back on the 19th. So uh, we confirmed, as best we can tell, that the team logs from Vel's team weren't tampered with. Uh, we determined that the interface that we were given by Vel's team works and is going to be able to be adapted to communicate directly with the Ardestians, the Reds. So that solves that problem. Uh, Sorab talked to Vel about their situation, and the it's interesting that the Cochrans have not seemed to have any interest in diplomacy with the uh, three species. They just have gone straight to let's kill them. Uh, the Trone saved Seth, set, stabilized her. Uh, we decided that we were going to integrate Vel's team into the crew. Uh, Sorab convinced the Ardestian friend we have to help us retrieve Denzite from Gehenna on the condition that we don't harm any Ardestians. And we ended with the cliffhanger, the, the cliffhanger I always like to give, this one being, Sorab received a reply from Lord Cladu of the Yellows, or the Lestrins, after yeah, having sent him a message a long time ago. So... I want, I want to clarify that, if I recall correctly, the terms we had were that uh, that our Ardestine friend would not help us attack, would not help us hurt any Ardestians. Right, okay. The, that... terms was not, the term was not that we wouldn't do that. The term was that he would not help us do that. Okay, yeah. That's, What's going on? That's important wording. That is important wording. <laughs> the goal should be to not hurt any. Yeah, but if we the goal do, is to not hurt anyone or even get caught. He he washes his claws of it. Yes. Yeah. All right. So, okay, also, why am I... Matt, you there, Matt? What just happened? Uh. Yeah. Um. Can you still hear me? I can. I can. Mhm. Mm yeah. Uh, looks like I'm going to have to restart my computer. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. As I was gonna ask I don't you know. to do something. Okay. All right. <laughs> Well, since I can still hear you and you can hear me, you can ask me and I can we can have someone else roll for me because I can't click anything oh. at all. <laughs> Restart your browser or you can't click anything. anything. I, can't, I can't click anything on my computer at all. <laughs> my mouse will move, but it won't click. <laughs> Damn it. Stay Maybe. Right. Maybe give it some words of encouragement. Maybe go back to using your phone. <laughs> 
do a, I'm gonna do a couple of cleansing rolls real quick. Wait, maybe, maybe like make a roll on. Oh, your oh, oh, oh my god! Oh. Thank you, Tim. See that? Yes, that's, that's a bad. Yeah, One hundred. That's that's yeah, that's a bad sign. So his consecutive what? rolls were a one for the last session for the grand finale of the Storm Lords, and then a hundred to start out today. I love one it. in what like a ten thousand oh, chance. Oh boy. Or, and I'm gonna do a, something I'm gonna do like that. Fifth. All right. So yeah, Matt, considering it's been roll. a few weeks there we go. since in, in in game since you've been here, you would have had plenty of time to do rolls to figure out the language of the Lestrans because you've been working with little Sorab. So. By now, I'm acting as if you'd figured it out, but we have to make that quote official. So. I'm so sad. Yeah. All right. Give me just a second to do get my computer to actually work. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's always something, Skippy. Damn it. Of course. <laughs> of course. I mean, you've been... we have still come a long way from when he first started, so. I mean, in a lot of ways. I'm proud of you, Skippy. And he's gone. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, he has disappeared. Okay. All right. So, as Tim plays the electric banjo. Have I ever told you the story about the Lexington losers? <laughs> Not today. <Music>. Not today. <laughs> I just kind of it's like see him pull out the banjo. Hearing the music play in my head. Oh lord! Need an old western. <laughs> I was muted on purpose. Thank you. I know, I know, I know. but I, I was know. like, I, I was really uncomfortable. Like character. I was like, never tell you the story, bro. Real southern. Like. Yeah. Oh lord. Uh, if I really want to pitch it, I have to take my teeth out so they <laughs> get the words done. <laughs> yes. Yes, just, just, oh, goodness. I really don't want to start the, uh, so I've got the message that I'm going to read to you from Cladu. I don't want to do it until Skippy's back, because the captain probably needs to know about it, so. Okay, Fish is continuously eating his tuna fish sandwich. Mm -hmm. fish As is important canonical An order. endless, an endless tuna fish sandwich. Yes. It is very hard to make Bottomless. a tuna fish sandwich that germinates. Uh, <laughs> I don't like the sound of that. Endless. A, German, a, a germinating tuna fish sandwich sounds rancid. Well, listen, it's either if you want an endless tuna fish sandwich, it's either producing more sandwich or it just sticks out the side of the ship. Yeah. So, it, I mean, it, every it, it, it it's like, one, it's, you see, it's one of those of, is a danger to everyone. It's made of stem cells, you see, <laughs> that, that switch to sandwich particles. <laughs> and once they're digested, they stop reproducing. But as long as they intake oxygen, they return to a perfect tuna fish shape. So instead of stem cells, they're like sandwich cells? Sandwich yeah. cells. <laughs> it, Not a sickle like cell, just, a sandwich you know cell. The, it's like the <laughs> seed equivalent cell. and the fish, you know. It's like the seed equivalent of stem cells for the bread. And then, you know, tuna fish for tuna. I can see the logic in that science. Yeah, it's very straightforward. I did have Whoa. to make like a, I had you know to what, blast though? it with a giant laser so I could make it oh, biomechanical no. engineering. But yeah, but yeah. then yeah, but what's producing more mayo? Uh, that's gonna give it be a dry sandwich right quick. The I'm mayo not, I'm no is a natural this. secretion made by the tuna. Some I don't like the. Some, some I was gonna say I'm thinking I'm, modification. I'm just, I was gonna say reproduction, but I'm gonna leave tuna it at juice. That. It's cool. like it's like sweat, you know. Oh. Mayo sweat. It's the, <laughs> some people's fantasy, you know. Man, Skippy is missing one hell of a conversation right now. It reminds me of the latest episode of Rick and Morty. I I, I gotta get catch up with Rick and Morty. Oh, I, I don't know if anybody saw the uh, re most recent season of uh, Lower Decks, but top notch. I, I, I'm about to. As soon as I move into this new place tomorrow, I've got so many shows to catch up on. Uh, Ahsoka, it, it... Uh, Invincible, Lower Decks. Oh, yeah. oh, right. Invincible 2 came out, didn't it? Yes. Yeah. First episode. They also had that special episode with that uh, I did see. Eve. That I did see. I'm kind of waiting on more episodes to come out because I, like, I did technically read the comics, but... <clears throat> after season one and uh i don't know how much it follows it's like different from the canon so i'm kind of like 
waiting, but also at the same time, like, kind of know what might happen. Yeah, I gotta see, I gotta see, I don't even know if we have that streaming service anymore, but if we do, I'll Amazon probably... Amazon Prime? Oh yeah, it is Prime. Yeah, I have that, so yeah. Um, uh, what I'll probably do is wait till like, the season is fully out, just like it was season one. I'll just wait till the season is fully out, and then binge it over the span of, like, three days. Mm. I get the best sponsored by Invincible, but... Gen uh, Gen V was really good too. Oh yeah, the I didn't boys. see. I haven't gotten in. I haven't done the vo- I haven't checked out the boys yet. The boys. Oh, the boys You'll is love great. The boys. You'll it love basically, the boys. I actually I remember I started watching the boys at the same time I started watching Invincible. It was like both of them, and it was like they're both like really good set sort of like deconstructions of superhero. Yep. Shows. Mm-hmm. Yep. The one, I, I, the one comic I want them to do a show on is, um, was it Irredeemable? Ooh, isn't that like, oh, yeah, I think I heard about that. Isn't like that basically the Superman goes absolutely crazy? <laughs> That's the one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that, that one's like really I, uh, dark. It's not like the boys dark, but. I'm, I'm working on, uh, I'm poking at it. I'm not seriously working on it because I have other projects that I have to be. Seriously, we're working on right now. The books that or a story that would be done as uh, serial fiction, probably uh, through Kindle Bella. Um, that would be a superhero. Actually, it would it, some of the characters that Tripper and Matt are familiar with. Um, let me go back to oh, from the me, story that I was originally working on. Yeah, I'm gonna go back to the the story that I was originally working on that I brought the detective and plague out of. And Strider and that. So wow, very cool. And that's a that's a that one's a superhero setting, um, in which it mostly follows like there is a team of like there's these government sponsored superheroes that are a big deal, and like they're basically the world's Justice League type of thing. But the story doesn't follow them. The story follows like other people who just kind of have to live in the world that they're making. And some of them have oh, powers, some of them don't. I love that little, I love like the, you know, the, the secondary, just people who are like having to deal with all the crap after the superheroes come through yeah. and destroy everything. Kind yeah. Of. Uh-huh, it's scary. Yeah, so like, so, so like a group of the characters actually work for an insurance company that, <laughs> you know, oh, wow. is, is run by the same people who run one of the teams, the superhero teams. And like one of the guys is a clerk, like at a convenience store. And his, he's invulnerable. He has a power. He's invulnerable. But his whole view of the whole matter is like, well, what am I... Like, I'm not going to go out fighting crime just because I can't get hurt. Like, I don't have any offensive abilities. And so he just works at a convenience store and no one can rob the place because they threaten him. And he's just like, get out of here. Yes, that <laughs> was like... fun. That was fun. <laughs> I remember that guy. Yeah, he's going to be... That's cool. Get that. Anyhow. I love that character. He's fun. Yes, he was. All right, the captain is back, so let's actually get this shit going 20 minutes later. Hey. Yeah, sorry. My computer decided, hey, let's do an update before we can restart your computer. Something like that, always. All right, oh, so. It wasn't even just a regular update either. It was a BIOS update. BIOS update? Wow. Big up. All right, so now that our, our, our computers are squared away and everything is working, so. All right, uh, I actually forgot. Tim, where were you when that message came in at two like two sessions ago? Any idea? I was leaving. I was leaving the Ardestian's room. Okay. I, I, I literally just finished a conversation with the Ardestian, uh, who I don't. I feel like we got his name, but I don't remember. Um, and then as as I was leaving his room, I got the call that we got okay. the message in. All but right. So, what's well, gonna? He has to do some tr- roles, doesn't he? Yeah. All right, Matt. Right, right, right. Let's do that first, Matt. Okay. So, this is kind of a foregone conclusion, but you just kind of have to actually do it just so it's done. All right, so we're going to do some rolls to see if you can get fully um, up on your uh, Lestrin language. So, let me pull up your sheet. There are people standing right outside my door talking. Of course there are. <laughs> Yeah, you remember the dorm life, right, Skippy? Oh, yes. Yes, I do. Leaving tomorrow. Kind of sad, but kind of not. Anyhow. Okay, so... 
Lestrin. All right, give me a uh, average of 53 and 12. Let's see here. Okay. That's a success. All right. So, let me pull that thing up. All right. So, before you had got, so you under, were able to understand phrases. All right. So, yeah. Now you're, now you're able to understand things in context with some degree of understanding of like subtext and metaphor you're but you're not fully proficient yet one more and then you're basically you'll be able to get the universal translator programmed will have absolutely no problem whatsoever with their language all right so give me that roll again and Ugh. so if we're going based off the 12 again that is a Definite, uh, no. <laughs> okay. Well, fun fact, you had plenty of time, so roll that again now with a plus 15. You got it. Congratulations. <laughs> we understand the Western language. All Can right. That save makes... that plus 15 for later? No. Uh, it only applied here. All right. So, good news. That'll make this next part way easier. Um, so, yeah. Tim is leaving the room of our Ardestian friend, who I don't remember whether I gave a name or not, but that, that's neither here nor there right now. Arty. So you got a message Robert. on your way out of the room that you got a reply from Lord Cladu and asking you to come up to the ready room to receive that. And the captain would have gotten the same message. Okay. All right. So, uh... On your way, you're going to pass uh, Zach Thunder, uh, Kiai, and uh, Brian O'Miles carrying an incredibly drunk Goyan uh, just through the hallway. Just okay. no context at all. Uh, and after they've passed, like, after they're, like, at the other end of the passageway, I'm just gonna go. Not even gonna ask. Not even gonna ask. All you're gonna I don't want to know. All you're gonna hear is she's just gonna be muttering, "Storm Lords forever." And <laughs> 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 Zach Thunder note. says, "Don't worry about it. She's fine." <laughs> Finger guns audibly spoken. <laughs> says that, he says that actually. Like that's <laughs> God, I love Zack Thunder. Okay. <laughs> Anyhow. Um, quick question. Yes. Because you said that I was able to get the um, Universal Translator programmed with the Lestrin. Yes. Would that... Would I have... Where would my Lestrin language be at that point? Well, or am I, I still going to roll for that? What you're at now is you don't actually have to roll for it. You're still, I mean, if you invest four points, you can still want to. But the way the game works is you need a 10 to be proficient in something. So at a 12, you are basically proficient in it. Okay. Now, if you get, you might need to make a roll if it's something like crypto cryptography or something that's written in code or something that's intentionally obscure, that's when a role might come into play. But okay. for just reading standard Lestrin or speaking it, you don't need a role now. Okay. So you cool. can invest more into it if you'd like, but you don't have to in order to use it. I don't cool. know if you saw this in chat, uh, Coinless, but I was petitioning for the way that we get home to be that uh, Zack Thunder becomes a member of the Q Continuum and he gets us home. <laughs> I, okay, I saw a little but about. did you see what I said to to, to that? Uh, I did, but I I forgot it. <laughs> it I know who fish. Q is, but I don't fish think I quite. Be know, I'm not quite uh, Trek savvy enough to know the Q continuum. They're gods, basically. They're really mischievous yeah. gods. 
Do you remember Q, though, from Next Generation? I'll take that as a no. Moving on. Well, I'm just, well, it's, hey, it's not the first time one of my characters has achieved godhood, so this is like standard. Oh, I mean, think about this. The Q more of a from matter of generation when, not if. is fish. Uh, we're not even. We're not even. I am hard dribble on this one. Moving on. Okay, you guys make it to the ready room. Or the, 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 uh, the whatever room you're going to. The ready <laughs> so. room. All right, so the uh, it, what what got sent was a uh, it's not verbal it's it's a text. It is a it's it's not a text message but it's in text form. Mm -hmm. So it reads as follows: <clears throat> To Sorab and the intrepid crew of the Lexington, I hope this message finds you in safety and good health. Your proposal and situation are most intriguing. Some members of my council find it too fantastical to believe, but it seems to me to be so fantastical that it could not be a fabrication. I believe that further discussion on the matter could benefit both of us. If you receive this message, you may hail me at the frequency enclosed. I look forward to your reply. Respectfully, Lord Cladu. Awesome. They remember, anyone remember what my original message was? Awesome sauce. That's a great All question. Uh, let's see. Let me look at my notes. Okay, I'm sure, here's I'm sure. A, another question for you. Um, where are we right now? Over there. <laughs> and over there. Because uh, last I remember, um, Actively we lost. were about to be surrounded by a whole lot of Ardestian ships. Oh, we dealt with that. Okay, Inside so... Inside of the Ardestian zone. Oh Alright, so what you missed, Matt, <laughs> is... So the crew from that uh, tabletop gaming weekend thing I had uh, that Chris and Coinless were part of, though that group found us. And they gave yeah. us a way out. They, okay. Uh, basically, uh, they gave us a way to... To, uh, the frequency for the shields that makes us look at long enough range we're invisible to our Destian scanners at close enough range we look like one of their ships until you get like up to a certain okay. point they can verify like wait a minute that's not one of ours so we've been able to use that to slip away so now we actually have the okay. ability to, to approach Gehenna undetected up to a point so cool we also have the last of the trinity now Yes, they had one of the, uh, uh, they had a foreign with them. Yes. So, no communication with him yet, but we can work on it. Oh, is he alive? Yes. Yes. Yeah. And, very well with, and very much within brain-wrenching distance. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Just a suggestion. I have to make it at least once a week, or else everyone's going to forget about it. I mean, technically, you make it, like, every in game every day just, oh. hey if you build a, a, a device that can perfectly rip the memories of a sapient creature out of its brain with no technically not a high chance of damaging them you gotta you gotta <laughs> flaunt it a little bit hey when you're a hammer everything looks like a nail that's true also well, sometimes we need a problems. scalpel instead of the sledgehammer hmm Hey, I can make a scalpel that I can brain wrench to. Oh boy! Just stick it right, right in the frontal cortex. <laughs> just, just like a USB yeah, drive. Right. Stab it in their socket. Just... <laughs> Quicker down. Anyway, the way. anywho. <clears throat> okay, Triple. so yes, Cladu did include a uh, frequency that you're able to contact. Awesome. What was it that I suggested? What was it that I offered him to him? Oh, right. I was looking that up until I got <laughs> sidetracked by... I don't remember what I got sidetracked by. I'm glad uh, he accepted my offer. I just don't remember what my offer was. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Sorab does. But, uh... If I recall correctly, it was basically to try to seek a diplomatic solution to the conflict. Yeah. I don't remember if it was any more uh, nuanced than that, but my notes don't indicate 
that it was more nuanced than that. That's basically what I have. All right. You're basically just explaining who we are, our situation, how we want to try to be a mediating voice between the Cochrans and the um, Fodalans. Did I tell Terra too that I was uh, doing this? No. Okay. No. Even I know that. Very intentionally. No. What? Yes, because most likely because the Terrans view any contact with them probably as a treacherous in nature. No, I told them about talking to the Augustians. I just, I, I have been telling them when I make contact with their races to try and negotiate. I just have the habit of telling them when it's too late for them to tell me not to. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. Better to ask for forgiveness than permission. I'm not asking forgiveness. Fuck them. Listen, we're, we're, <laughs> trying to, we're trying to solve a problem here. Diplomacy at its finest. <laughs> <laughs> well, there goes our family-friendly rating for tonight. Now we're like we're like a half an hour in. I think. No, we've... wait. We get one. Remember? All right, PG thirteen. Okay. Yeah. All right, so Tim, don't we're... fuck up again. <laughs> there it goes. Now we're now it's TVMA. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Anyhow, <laughs> so there's, 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 <laughs> you have some place to call, so, <laughs> what you gonna do? Okay, so, um, I'm gonna turn to the captain, <laughs> and, and our, our, our for reals captain is still unconscious, right? Yes. All right. So, yeah, I'm going to turn to our acting captain. Wait, and, hold on. Uh, when did we get the For Reals captain back? Oh, God, like you've been out ago. for a while, haven't yeah. you? Yeah, we got the whole senior staff back. They're all alive, including yeah. Ferguson. He's just, we got most of him back. Yeah. Okay. They're just Brian oh, O'Miles did a beast oh, job goodness. of teleporting people. Yeah, Brian crazy. O'Miles is like a surgeon with, tele with, with using the transporters. I mean, like, it was amazing. Like, we caught up yeah. to that ship that had the senior staff in it. The one that attacked the the uh, the, the uh, blue ship, we caught up to them. They took the senior staff, but we okay. caught up to them, knocked out the real shield, rear shields, transported them all out, and got out of there. Yep. Nice. Cool. I forgot how long so you've been I'm... gone. <laughs> yeah, the entire month of October, I was gone. Yeah, that's a skill issue, man. Yeah, so most of them. No, uh... that's a work issue. <laughs> <laughs> Most of them came uh, unconscious, and one of them came unconscious and missing bits. Yes. No, they were all unconscious. Which bits? Yeah, I know. That's what I just said. You said most of them came unconscious. Yeah, and yep. then I said the rest of them came unconscious and missing bits. Yeah, he did say that. I'm curious. They all came bits, unconscious. <laughs> we got one cyborg slash uh, Robocop. You haven't, oh, I don't no. think you've rebuilt him yet. But no, we have not, oh, but no. that is definitely an option. We I mean, have the technology. He's missing most of half of his body, so. Yeah. So are we building the six million dollar man or the bionic woman? <laughs> well, this was, uh, this was Commander Ferguson, the dude, so. Hey, they can be the bionic woman. the six million dollar man. Yes. Make him a big fish. You know, I was thinking, like, has anyone seen, um, Star Wars, like, but, like, the Clone Wars series with, uh, no. they get the guy that's been bisected and they give him, like, spider legs? Oh, those monk things? Just think, You mean uh, Darth like, Maul? Darth Maul, yeah. How you get, like, uh, oh, the geez. lower half is just full-on spider legs. Oh, yeah. I feel like, I feel like no one, hey. That only happens for, like, he only has that for like three episodes, I'm pretty yeah, sure. But it's then cool, he gets regular right? legs. Let's yeah. give him spider legs, and then we, since you have plenty of like room, we can also like attach like I don't know, like a rail cannon or something to his arm. Yeah, his, so, his... Um... so we're doing Wild Wild West, is what's happening. <laughs> oh, boy. Hey, who oh, doesn't want to be able to climb immediately... up walls and fire through 17 plates of pure titanium? 
to You've seen Monsters, Inc., Smith's right? Third worst movie. What? You've seen Monsters, Inc., right? Yeah. <laughs> the director. <laughs> or, oh, director, director never. He never had a Tesla. Whatever his name is, yeah. Or railgun. Yeah. Slugborn, something like his that. Name. Uh, uh, Slugworth. Anyhow, we have tripled the absolute hell out of this one. So it yes, we have. If it becomes canon. No, it has not become. <laughs> no, it will have become. Tri it would still be trouble. It's just non-trouble going forward. Well, we'll we'll get to that when we get to that. Right now, we've not gotten yeah. to that. <laughs> anyway, so uh, all right. So basically, uh, I guess the question is: Are we trying to meet these people first, or are we trying to get the stuff first? I mean, technically, if we meet with them, they could help us get this stuff, wouldn't they? Maybe. I mean, they're not. It's not. They're not in. They're not holding it. But I, I think if we get them on on our side, um, it's going to do a lot in terms of getting the Ardestians and the Farans on board as well. Right. This was the Lestrins that the we yellows, were. The yellows. Yes. The yellows. And they're kind of like the they're kind of like the binding force of that coalition, aren't they? They're that what it seems to be. Yeah, they're the mediators between the 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 warlike Ardestians and the very zealous Farans. Yeah. So there's there's a lot of there's a lot of work that we need to do to make peace with the Ardestians and, and the Farans. But having the Lestrans on board, I think, is going to go a long way in that direction. So I guess the question is do we risk do we do we go for the Ardes do we go for the Denzite um, and hope that this system that we have works or do we keep that as a backup plan that we don't tell anyone about and work with see what we can do with the Lestrans first. See what avenues we can open through that. Because none of the plan, none of our theoretical routes that we have thought of so far, all of them rely on the Densite, correct? Anything that involves opening the wormhole. Yes, it relies on the dead side. Would getting the Densite first impact the relationship with the Lestrans? I don't know. Unfortunately, we don't have enough intel on their internal di diplomatic relations to know how rapidly they will take offense on behalf of the Odestians. Let's talk to the Lestrians first and then we can see how to get the Densite from there. Okay. If we need to do a stealth mission, so be it. Okay, now here's the other thing though. If we're taking that route then we're delaying the possibility of getting Tavar, the planet, through the wormhole. Right. Which means we need if we're if we're delaying getting the Densite so that we can try this route, then we need to have something in place to save the people of Tavar. I forgot how much of a timetable that had. Uh I think half a year, like six months, and it's probably been about like a month and a half. Uh, I can tell you exactly. It is January third right now, and the deadline on the planet is May twenty fourth. So yeah, we got like five five months. Yeah, a little over five months. Also, your your 
a good distance away from the planet too. So yeah. it's, it's not like you have the solution. Like you get the Denzite on May 23rd. By the time you get back, everyone's dead. No, it's yeah. fine. We just build a wormhole to get to them. How much does that do we need? Um, I want to call. I want to call glue. I mean, we kind of know what the machine needed last time from like looking at it. Yeah, but I don't. But glue probably does. Uh, it work on yeah. it. <laughs> I imagine the more the merrier. Hey, Calvo. I would say Whatever. we need just enough. <laughs> okay. I, I mean, exact, specifically. I've heard the exact okay. amount. Okay, yeah. well, I mean, I, I, I guess, okay. We don't need to, like, say an exact amount out loud. My question is, will the amount that we need fit in a shuttle craft? Yes, and easily. Does the Does the system, is the system that stores... That makes the ship look Ardestian. Can that be applied to a shuttlecraft? Uh, well, you have an Ardestian yes. cargo ship. Oh right. Yeah. And it'll fit in there easily. We also have a stealth, a smaller stealth craft. Yes. The one that the people came in, right? Yes. Yeah. Well, Black they came in both, okay. but yes. Okay. So. So what if? What if? We have a small team go on the Ardestian ship that we have to go get Denzite. And we have our Ardestian ally as kind of the face of it. Like, if they make communications, he does the talking. Go get the Denzite and try to get it to the wormhole facility and then meet back up with us while we go to meet with the Lestrans. Wait. Did you say take the Denzite to the facility? What? Did you say and have them take the Denzite straight to the facility? Yeah. The Or a meeting place, you know, whatever it looks like. I would say but... For them to rendezvous back with us before heading there, for the simple reason of um, them not getting blown to smithereens by the uh, by the Tavaran. No, not the Tavarans. The um, Cochran. the Terrans. Cochrans. Because um, how would they know it's our ship? <laughs> oh, that's easy. We tell them. <laughs> And the likelihood of them actually trying to find out before they shoot? Listen. They already know that we've had some communication with the Ardestians and have made some progress diplomatically. They may think we've made slightly more progress than we actually have. We'll deal with that later. But they know that there's been some progress. If we tell them this Ardestian ship that is coming to you with Denzite, and it has one Ardestian and a handful of, of our crew on it, then they'll watch out for that ship. Like, they want the Denzite. True. Okay. But, um, or we, I mean, we could have them meet up with us first. That's probably fine, too. I just... Given that we don't know a whole lot about the situation, it might be best if we don't have the Denzite on us when we meet the Lestrans. Oh no, I was thinking they would rendezvous with us after we talk to the Lestrans. I guess. But time-wise, I think having them go to the facility ha and contacting them ahead of time saying hey we're sending this Ardestian ship with the Denzite 
would be right. the best course get... of action. Can we get the map? Sure. Let's... Map. All right. So All right. we're down. So we're down. We're down in, we're in down about, in about like here, here, right? Here, right? Well, I thought we were over here. Well, we're we're, in our a lot's happened now? since you were left here, Matt. <laughs> okay. But where are we now? I would think that we would still be in the collective's territory, though. Yeah, where we are right now is we're basically on the line between okay. Ardestian <coughs> and Bakken's territory. So. Okay. Um... <laughs> All right, if we, and the wormhole station's all the way over there, we're all the way over here. Um, that's blue and yellow controlled, and we don't have, we don't have relations with the blues yet, the foreigns. Um, but yeah, yeah, okay. So what if, what if we have the, uh, what if we have the Ardestian mission meet up at Starbase Elizabeth? We talked to Starbase Elizabeth right now. How long is it going to take us to, if we wanted to get to right about here between Blevins and Berlin? How long would that take us? All right. So, in the Lexington, all right. So that is thirty-three and a half light years. Yeah, give or take. All right. So going like through that. the nebula. Going through the nebula. Yes. I mean, the nebula is not a big issue to go through as long as we're not like trying to fight. Like, like, do we have to slow down in the nebula? No, or you're. Navigation deflectors work, so you can go at warp through it. We already established that. Uh, let's see. Let me pull up the speed again. How fast the ship goes. That. Let's see. I need to really organize these sheets better. Some technical data. All right. Okay, so if we traveled at a safe speed of warp eight and a half, that is three light years a day. So that would take days. us like 11 days from our current position. Um, and there... Where's their freaking... Oh, their homeworld's way over there. Okay. So, oh, wait. So, for them, presumably their government, their, their government people would be coming from their homeworld, probably. I think we lost him. Did you I really? Him. I can oh. still see him. No, I can still hear him. Oh, okay. this is me. Weird. Um, So, let me just check this. Yeah. All right. So, that's, it's farther for them to get there. And their ships are presumably slower. Yeah. Okay. So, let's... Uh... All right. So, we can... We can tell them... We can, we can tell them that... Uh... We'll meet them in in one month at that location because it's 
we can be the new like our ship can be the neutral ground in between these two planets um and both sides can feel fairly safe because they have their worlds right there you know what i mean yeah they we're not pulling anybody deep into anybody else's territory they both know that they have support on call right by right nearby well one thing that you would know is that area is actually basically the most active area on the entire front line. You see how Blevins yeah. has been changed hands so many times over the last few years? The planet yeah. is... There's actually fighting happening on the planet right now. So that is uh, a very active war zone. Right. Which means the people that they send there are going to be itch trigger happy. Um... Now, remember one other thing. Neither of those planets is inhabitable either. Right. The only inhabitable planets are Tevar, Terra 2, the three home planets, and technically... Uh, Pollux, or yeah, I think it was Pollux, the the one planet that the uh, that Vel's team had their mission on because it's being terraformed. But other right. than that, everything else is like gas planets or rocks or just anything. I mean, else. I still think that's our best shot. Is if we can get if we can get both sides to stand down long enough to have this talk. I don't know what to do about the blues, though, if the blues are involved in that fighting. If the Tharans are fighting, then we'd have to figure out how to get them to stand down as well. All right, you know what? Forget it. We'll do... Um... So if we go about there, halfway between Verona and Phoenix. Yeah. Um. That's gonna take us about eleven, twelve days. Yeah. If you go um, that. Yeah. Wait, but that um, that thirty four point eight includes going all the way to Starbase, Felix. Yeah, that's that's the total. That's twenty. See how it keeps increasing. You can set waypoints. Yeah, but my point is that the difference from this location to here. Is only twenty. It's not thirty because it's 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 not counting from zero at fourteen point two. It's right. counting from fourteen point two. So so it's about twenty light years, it's which about is about seven days. Seven days. So if we let's see if we can get them. Let's try to get three weeks. If we. How long is it going to take the? How long would it take the that ship to get to Gehenna? The uh, the, the supply the, ship. Uh, the supply ship. Uh, it is not very fast. Uh, let me look that up. Do they I have that anywhere too. else? What? Do they have like? 
do, is it only is Genzite only available at Gehenna, or do they like send it to other pl worlds and then they can like? Oh, that you have no idea. All you know is okay. that that was the only place that the uh, the Cochrans that were able to get mind. it. Okay. What 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 the Ardessians are doing with it? You have no idea. Maybe it's elsewhere. Right. Maybe they're sending it somewhere. Maybe they're just letting it sit there and rot. You'd have no idea. Okay. All right. So the right, Ardessian. Okay. Uh, it cruises at warp five. It's emergency speed, at which point you've got to be rolling checks to see whether or not it overheats is seven. Absolute maximum wow. is warp seven point seven, but then you're doing a lot of checks to see whether it like overheats. So okay, what's it at five though? All right. So if you're cruising at warp. Five, Five. Let me pull it over here real quick. Uh, at warp five, you are going a quarter of a light year a day. So a hundred days. Yeah, if you could, you could go six point five. If you're careful, uh, how long would it take at six point five? Let me do that. All right, so at six, it would be half a light year a day. So at six point five, it's three quarters of a light year a day. What if we modified the engine? They already did that. Uh, what if we double modify it? <laughs> Uh, here or no. Actually, that's 36 days. And that's one way. Oh, God. Hmm. What about our. What about our. What about their stealth ship? How, about, how fast does that go? Let's see here. Man, I'm glad I wrote all this down. Let's see. Uh, all right, so. Where are you? Uh, I kind of forgot that our ship is like the most advanced ship. <laughs> it's also, its cruising speed is warp 5. Emergency 7.5. Maximum 7.7. .7, so only right, marginally so, faster. So how long so does it take at 7? Alright, so at 7, that's one light year a day. Okay. But now, one thing with the design of that ship is if you go too fast, it starts to negate the stealth effects. Because basically, you're putting on the afterburners, you're just leaving an ion trail. So if you're going that fast, it, the stealth effect no longer works. I mean, okay. How fast can we go to get over there? I mean, we... Absolute maximum is 9.2. Emergency is 9, but doing that, you're having to do rolls. But you can do... <coughs> uh, let's see. I mean, you can do 8.5, but there are still rolls, but it's not as frequent. 8 is the fast you can go without having to do, like, to make sure you're not overheating the engines. And 8 is how many light years per day? 2. Right. Yeah, 2. So mathematically, the only way we can get... Mathematically, the only way we can get Denzite over there in time for them to even try to do anything for Tavar is if we do it with yeah. our, with the with our ship with Lexington. Yep. Unless we can upgrade the system unless we can upgrade the engine somehow. I've never <laughs> met a problem meat couldn't fix. <laughs> Um, 
so much wrong with that statement. But so... not untrue. <laughs> That would I mean, be with, the except, with the exception of Fish's morality. <laughs> so no that would fish. be 35 days. If we did it, it would be 35 days just to get back to Starbase Elizabeth. And then another 12. Well, hold on. So if we, if we didn't go to Starbase Elizabeth, if we just did that, yeah. 45 days total. Which is almost half the time that we have available. Um, I mean, we could pull the Red Wedding. What? I'm just saying, we, set, we go to do the mission, we set everyone up for a peace treaty, and then we just blow it up. Uh, they're, they're... I'm not saying it's a good idea. I'm just deciding to state a possible idea. Because, I mean, hey, the, the... if you blame it on both sides, that would keep everyone distracted long enough for us to steal their warp technology, rig it up to the Lexington, and then just warp Tavar back to the main room and say, hey, wash your hands of this universe, you know? Uh... Deuces. Fade out. I'm not saying, again, not saying it's a good idea. <laughs> But I thought I might as well add that that little, you know, uh, sticky note of a plan to the board. You're just spitballing here, right? There's yeah. no bad ideas when you're spitballing, ideas. except oh, when there are. Except that. Except so if that, we... that, 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 that is a horrible okay. idea. Okay, alternate idea. We, we harvest the, the bodies of the Reds to make a psionic gateway back to our universe. Should I mute him? I think I should mute him. I think you can mute him if it comes so, to keep those kinds of ideas. Yes, Tim. Uh, yes, Tim. So if we, if we, I'm not a fan of muting people. So if we go <laughs> ahead and we, um, if we get this flight path, and it goes smoothly. So if we did this flight path and it goes smoothly, we could meet the yellows in 60 days. Okay. Um, 60 days seems like a really long time to wait to do the peace talks. You know? I, I will throw one thing out there. You've not even called the guy back to see what he wants to do. Yeah. No, I know. I'm just trying to figure out what I'm going to pitch to him. I guess True. it's going to take him like 60 days to get there anyway. He's traveling a little less than a light year a day, probably. I think great way to start a peace talk is say we have a weapon, <laughs> and uh, I think everything just kind of flows naturally from there. So, like, is this uh, idea coming from GI Joe's too? No, we have a weapon. I still have that bra uh, that psionic space bear mace taser. Never got to use that yet. No. Well, that only works on the Ardesti. Yeah, but I mean, that's half the battle, really. Well, a third, third of the battle. Honestly. Well, more like two-thirds, since we know for a fact that they literally have been, like, experimenting on the other two races. Yeah. So if we red wedding the red, I'm just saying, it's a bit, bit poetic justice. So if we pitch to them that we'll meet them in 70 days... Halfway between Starbase Felix and Verona. On the grounds that it's going to take them, we understand it's going to take them a little while to get people together and there anyway. Um, and they'll probably want to set up some security protocols because they'll be within uh, Terra 2's controlled space. Um, and also because we need to talk to Terra 2 and make arrangements with them. We can be talking to Terra to in flight. So we take that 70 days to do this trip. With a little bit of wiggle room.
for if we have an issue somewhere along the way. Um, but we make arrangements with we make arrangements with Terra two on the on the way. One, so that they're ready to when we if we show up with Denzite, they're ready to just plug and play. Like they're not they're we're not showing up with Denzite and going, here's the Denzite, and then they go, Oh crap, okay, let's get everything set up to try to make this work. Yeah. No, they're they're like finger o- waiting over the button for somebody to put the Denzite into the system so they can push it. The, the pit like, crew, but with Denzite. Basically. Yeah. yeah. They just gotta refine it, that's it. Like they 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 are ready to do what they need to do with it as the moment it arrives. Um and then we dip over to have those talks. This is assuming we don't, you know, have something go wrong at Gehenna. This is building in a 10-day buffer for if okay. something goes wrong. <laughs> yeah, but I meant extra wrong. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If it goes if it goes all kinds of haywire, we're going to have to figure something else out. Like, it also gives us time to, like, have a significant amount of problem at Gehenna and then go here and send somebody else like with the shuttlecraft or something mm. with the Denzite. Because once we're here, like it doesn't matter. We can use our shuttlecraft, which should have roughly the same warp capability as a ship. Or call one of their ships in that'll be even faster than that. Mm. Yeah. Just like Yeah. But we just we just ship some you know, we can you know, if we end up if we end up having a lot of problem, we're there longer than we need mean to be. Then we have we have room in the schedule to just come straight here and send the Denzite to the wormhole station on another another way. Yeah. Honestly, it's a pretty sound plan. I only have one note. Of, of genuine concern. Um, what are we going to do about Mr. No Chairs? Like, he's probably... Knowing how he was super okay with blowing up everybody on Vel and his own ship, or that ship, to just hide some information, I feel like he's not going to just let a peace talk go without absolutely capitalizing on that to stage like a like an assassination like that's just going to happen that's that's not like a, a uh, an if that's that's a certainty um because if i was a crazy you know black up psychopath <laughs> i would you know i would assume that that would be one of the most ideal places to to sow the seeds of chaos and mr no chair yeah, Mr. No- I can't remember his name or his... The name. Secretary oh, of Intelligence. The Secretary yes. of Intelligence. I, I, I nicknamed him no- Mr. No Chair, and that's literally Because all he wouldn't give us any chairs. Remember. All right, yeah, Matt. I, can't, I cannot remember him from anything else. Matt also doesn't know... Uh, so how, how much do you know about the, the Vels group? Like, at all? Anything, Matt? Not really. <laughs> okay, so they went on a mission to this planet, discovered that the... Our Destians have been doing experiments in mind control on humans, yellows, and blues. Yes. So they went in, got the information, got out, blew up the facility, uh, made it to the ship they rendezvoused with, sent all the information they got from the planet to the Secretary of Intelligence, and he got it, debriefed, and said, thank you for your service, and the warp core on the ship that they were on suddenly started going critical, and they barely escaped. So the implication, which Vel's group believes, is that uh, they tried to, the Secretary of Intelligence tried to kill everyone to bury what happened. Why? Don't know. Like, my first thought is, why hasn't the Secretary of Intelligence used that to leverage the blues and the yellows against the reds? Because he hates the blues and the reds, I imagine. Yes, but if you have them attack each other, that makes each side weaker, and when one of them is killed off, then you attack the other two. 
that's what the red wedding is for at the meetup of these trees. <laughs> but, but that is not a... our mission. I know, but they're already. I'm saying is they're already in an alliance, so like getting information from the enemy probably isn't a great way to break them up. But if you get it at the peace treaty and you start sowing seeds, use some of that mind control tech that he probably has now. Whoopsie. Um, you know, that'd probably be a good time to start brainwashing the people in charge or committing mass murder. You know, it's a. So I'm just saying, we should probably deal with some of these outlying factors before we get everybody in one location where, like, it's effectively <laughs> the melting pot. It's like, you know, the Chernobyl of bad decisions. Well, I mean. Yes, obviously we're going to want to take some security measures, um, but also we have a little bit of, you know, we have 70 days to figure that out, and we don't, yeah. we're not, we're probably not going to start messaging uh, Terra 2 until until after we have the Densite at least. Until after we have the Densite, so like and we're, we're far enough away from Gehenna that we don't run any risks of Exposed, showing our hand by sending communications. So I say, so yeah, we have some time to figure out how to handle that while we're in flight. Agreed. Yeah. Just, just thought we should, we should. But I'm, I'm, I'm definitely not against yeah. like figuring that out. I just, I just don't think we need to hold up, based on the fact that we haven't yet figured that out. Yeah. Just you know? didn't want anyone to forget about the potential psychopath within the <laughs> uh, the Earth faction. Thank goodness there's only one crazy guy like him. I'm sorry, you were breaking up and I did not hear a word you just said. <laughs> eh, it wasn't that important. Okay. <laughs> anyway, that's that's my that's the idea I'm throwing out there. I'm fine with it. No, obviously this all hinges on people agreeing to meet us, but. This, I'm just saying that this is the this is the this is the message we can pitch to the uh, the the Knights or whatever the Lestrans Lestrans uh, this is the idea we can pitch to the Lestrans of meeting up in 70 days and the idea that we can pitch to Terra 2 of meeting up in 70 days um, and the thing that we can be doing during those 70 days. Okay, so do we have a plan going forward now? Sneak into Gehenna, right? I mean, this is what I'm pitching. It's I'm not the captain. I don't make that decision. Captain? Skipper Skippy? Oh, I, it sounds like a great plan. I currently see no outstanding flaws. Well, you see no outstanding flaws. Do you see any bad flaws? Yeah, do you see any... Moderate a flaws? bad flaw is, a, is an advantage. <laughs> true. A negative negative. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Okay. All right. Go so uh, <clears throat> let's start with hailing frequency then. <clears throat> and I am letting uh, Sorab take the lead on talking to the Lestrans. Just so everyone's aware. <laughs> All right, so let's call up uh, Lester number one, I guess. Oh, Lord Cladu. Yeah, there it is. All right, you will send out the call, and after a few seconds, the screen is going to blip up with. Uh, so you've, you've seen what Lestrans look like. He's one of them. Yellow skin, uh, humanoid appearance, uh, wearing what appears to be relatively fancy clothing. And funny, there's no humans in this room. <laughs> <laughs> that actually is probably going to help your case. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm thinking. Yes. Yeah, All right. probably a good thing. There's only 
one human in this whole crew right group right now, and it's great. All right, <laughs> very diverse. And it's the psycho. Screen's going to very accurate then, even more. <laughs> yeah, very human. So you'll see him, and he'll say, "Might this be the good ship Lexington?" It is indeed, sir. Uh, I am Lieutenant Commander Sorab. This is the Acting Captain Lieutenant Commander Crystal. Pleased to have the opportunity to talk to with you. Yes, the the pleasure is. Oh, mine. I'm Lord Cladu, as I'm sure you've gathered by now. So, yes, you obviously received my message. And might I say, your story from so what I saw in that really message bad. is... I, I haven't heard a word you said after Cladu. Hello? Tim? Hello? Can you yeah, guys hear me? I can hear you. There you go. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, you got me, Tim? Yeah, it comes and goes. Oh, lovely. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, like just, that. Just, just stop oh, me no. if you lose me. Um, so. All right, so yes, I'm the good... I, I, I'm Lord of Clue. Well, I must say that the, the story that I've I've heard from our, our communication certainly is one of the most interesting ones I've heard in quite a long time. And taking a look at you, uh, based on the fact that you're most obviously not human, leads more credence to me to believe that yes, you are not directly aligned with the Cochrans that we've had such, such fun dealings with these last mm. few decades. Yeah, we, as I, as I believe I mentioned, we, when they left, they were members of the Federation and we are currently members of the Federation of planets back in our galaxy. Um, but obviously things have changed significantly, uh, both for them and in our own environment. So, um, we, we have informed the, we've informed the people of Terra 2 that our intention is to facilitate diplomatic relationships to resolve this war. And they have, uh, agreed to participate in such arrangements if we can make them. Well, that would be a fun change of pace. I, I do much prefer uh, verbal arguments and sparring over shooting at each, at each other in space. Whoa. Did you lose me, Tim? I'm going to take a while. I guess that everyone just lost me. I can still see you, Tim. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. It, Tripper and uh, Chris vanished for me, so for oh. a little bit. So. Oh, I can still see and hear Tripper. And okay. Yeah, I, <clears throat> yeah, I can hear and see everybody. If that's uh, oh, okay, I can hear and see everybody. Uh, All right. Yeah, I just thought that maybe when I saw two people going out rapidly, I thought that it was going to be everybody pretty quickly. Yay, be ninja. Was... Okay. Um, I can't remember what I just said. So you were talking about yeah, doing diplomacy. He said. Well, that would be a... a He'd fun. prefer the verbal arguments. He Over said. shooting at each other in space, yes. Yeah. Excellent. Um, well, we are we are currently in the middle of, of sorting out a number of situations, uh, one of which is that there, when we fell through the wormhole, a planet fell through with us, and it is currently on an unstable or, orbit. And so we're not... In trying to address that, we're not in a prime location at the moment, but uh, between us getting there and making arrangements with Terra 2 and, of course, any arrangements you need to make, uh, we have a location that is about halfway between a Terra 2 base and one of your worlds that we would like to try to make arrangements to meet in about 70 days. That's a strangely specific number. Well, it's... Uh, we estimate it would take we estimate it would take us about 60 to get there. We estimate it would take you about 60 to get there. So that gives a little bit of wiggle room. That's fair. A bit of prudence. But let's 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 see if we can pre-conference this a little bit. What exactly is it? I know talk peace talks is 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 
that's a vague term. That's that's a that's a nice over idea, but give me some more specifics on what exactly it is you would be hoping to achieve with any kind of discussions. Because might I remind you, even if you discuss with us, we're only one third of this little alliance we have here. There's only so much that I can do, no matter how long of a sit down we have. I'd hate for us to go all this way and not be able to accomplish anything. Well, we believe that you know, based on our understanding of how your uh, how the relationship with you and the Farns and the Ardestians is arranged, we believe that making arrangements with you would be a crucial aspect in establishing a more equitable peace with everyone else as well. Uh, we have tried to communicate with the Ardestians, and we made a little bit of it, but it, it seems obvious that they're they're going to need convincing from someone other than us before they're going to sit down um, to, to negotiate anything. Ultimately, the Terrans are... The Terrans have been attempting to find a way to get home. That's how the wormhole that we fell through got opened, was that they were experimenting with trying to control the wormhole that brought them here in the first place. So our goal on the Lexington would be to establish a working relationship by which we and the Tavarans and the people of Terra 2 are able to get help to get the wormhole machine operative and and then return to our own galaxy. Um, in exchange for this, um, the, if the, if all of the people of Terra Two leave, then all of the planets that they've held control over uh, would be up for negotiation. Well, I feel it would be negotiation between the three of our species. Is if you're getting what you'd like, I believe there'll be none of you left around to negotiate. No, of course not. But my point is, if we make arrangements ahead of time, that in exchange for this help, uh, you know, well, we the my hope is that Terra Two would agree to allow uh, people from either your race or from your coalition to begin working on those planets so that when they leave, it's a smooth transition for you. A peaceful transition of power, as it were. Something like that. Not rats. Obviously, obviously if, if all the humans leave, we would have no use for those planets anymore. Um, but if we leave you to fight over those planets after we go, we haven't exactly made the situation better for you. Oh, so your so your idea. It. So you're you're also attempting to head off uh, conflict between us and our uh, planetary neighbors. I see. I believe that any arrangements that we make would be more appealing to you if they don't come with did, did uh, I just drop lost, for anyone yep, else I okay. just lost him yeah I lost him too uh, Tim you fell off the planet there for and he's gone again and he fell again <laughs> <laughs> joyous hey at least it wasn't me this time Again, all of you say that you lost me. Um, I see you again. There he's back. And then, and then, so I was like, all right, I guess I just restart. Yes. It. I don't think it's video, video ninja though. I, I, uh, I get terrible internet in my office. It's really that simple. Okay, so last thing I heard something about like it wouldn't advantage you, or it wouldn't advantage Basically, us if we just left. If, and yeah. Well, yeah, no, what, well, yeah, what I had last, the last thing I said was that I thought that any offer we make would be more appealing 
if we could if it doesn't come with additional problems right right very well then hmm then I suppose it wouldn't hurt to make this uh, little journey however Based on where you're describing, that would, I can already tell you what a lot of members of my council are going to say, that this, to them, is absolutely going to reek of a trap, having the leader of our entire species, our entire race, being in enemy territory. That's, that's more than a slight bit of a security risk. I had another idea on a location, but I felt it was harder to uh, secure. Um, my initial thought had been along the along the about halfway between Blevins and Berlin. You know these these two stars. I'll, I'll point them out. Um, the problem with that, and I I I believe that the humans can be convinced to stand down long enough to have these talks. I believe that you can convince your people to stand down long enough to have these talks, but I'm under the impression that the foreigners are also involved in conflict there. Yes. That is currently a joint campaign between our people and the foreigners against the Cochrans for those two star systems. Uh, and so, right. and uh, so on the, a side having note, a, uh, sorry, I was going to say, are we not able to do it, like, on the Lexington itself as, like, a neutral Oh, no, territory? I was talking about doing it on the Lexington. Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah, if we do it on the Lexington, if we park the Lexington between those two places and have the meeting on the Lexington, ah. and Lexington serves as neutral ground with close proximity to, and no one's really going deep into anyone else's territory, and they both have close proximity to places that they kind of have secure footings on. So, um... Meeting there, I think my initial thought for that was that it's if the if the Lexington is there, it can serve as a neutral middle ground. It's clo it's no one's going deep into anyone else's territory, and it's close enough that everyone knows that they have the means to secure as needed. But it puts extra weight on you to convince the foreigners to also stand down to make that conversation work in that location. That indeed it does, and they are... You know, the foreigners are the foreigners. They do as they so please most of the time. How about this? Either way, we're going to have to head in that direction. It's going to take us a little bit of time. Um, what if you take a few days to talk with your council, maybe talk to the foreigners, see what the see what the better of the option, see which of these options is better, or if you have one that you can suggest that isn't going to make Terra 2 feel like they're walking into a trap. Um, and then let, let us know. So... Maybe I have slightly you misunderstood, so you, you, this would be a sit-down between my people, you, and the Cochrans as well, correct? The The idea is that it would be between you and the Cochrans with us mediating. Ah, I, I'm, I may not have been listening adequately. I, I, I missed the part that they would actually have the Cochrans be present as well. Now things make slightly more sense. Okay. Yes. Very well. Yes, this this will need to be run through multiple channels and advisors to hash this one out for any contingencies that I may not be able to think of off the top of my head at the moment. But yes, I do believe that we may be able to accomplish something here. But we'll have to see. I'll tell you, if it was between you and me, we could end the conflict today. But unfortunately, 
We both know it is not. Yes. Very well is not. Well, I hope we can make the most of the situation now that we've arrived. And I will contact Terra 2 and confirm their readiness to engage with this in this conversation. And when I when you've come up with uh, which uh, what option is going to work best, um, I should hopefully be able to tell you what they've said. Very well, I do believe that's our best route going forward. Thank you very much. Lieutenant Commanders, pleasure talking with you. And just, what was his uh, Skidoo? What's his title? Lord Cladoo. Lord. And, and yourself, Lord Cladoo. Thank you. And, and transmission ends. All right. Cool. All right. Where are you guys? <laughs> yeah. We're off the call. We're off the call. Definitely off the call. No more. All right. Let's go steal some dead sight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it turns into a heist movie. Okay. <laughs> last last time it was an, a cheesy '80s coming of age. Now it's a heist movie. I love it. We are hot, genre want, hopping, just like Star Trek does. I want Fish and the Furious. The Fish. And the furious. Well, he's oh, he's not furious generally. He's just mad. It's all about family. <laughs> <laughs> Never turn your phone. about it's all about bio bio mechanical engineering. So when does George Clooney get teleported onto the ship? George Clooney. Uh, <laughs> at earliest convenience. What if I okay? What if Oceans I make 11, a 12, and cyber, Damn it! What if I make a cybernetic George Clooney? You know. <laughs> I'm, surpri I, I'm surprised I you don't one. just have that in storage. Why? Why not? Well, well, actually, you see, you remember that? You remember that cadaver I was working to resurrect? <laughs> that actually is George Clooney. <laughs> not. I had to pull it out of deep storage. Very deep storage. Yeah. How does it still have meat on the bones? Don't worry. You about see, it. they. You see, when George Clooney died, he was kind of pulled a Walt Disney, and they froze him. Uh, and so you see, I uh, after they got the DNA from it. I, I managed to get the rights to it after a massive bidding war. Uh, <laughs> Jesus, my cadaver. So yeah, I actually, yes, that is the canonical uh, answer. I have the <laughs> cadaver of George Clooney, of which I've managed to slightly resurrect and will be continuing to attempt to resurrect. So we have a uh, undead cyborg George Clooney. I am very afraid to let you actually make this canon because I can foresee the... I can foresee very unforeseen consequences. I would of like this. to make a roll to resurrect George Clooney. Oh, <laughs> this, all right. This is a fifty-fifty. It's just getting you fifty-fifty. Nope, no George Clooney for you. Giggity, but no George Clooney for you. Make make little George Clooney like we have little so rare. We want little. George. <laughs> can I? Can I? Okay, I can't resurrect George Clooney's. Old, can I put his brain in a talking jar? A la uh, Futurama. Yeah, like yeah. future. Can I just have like his head in a jar? You can have a copy of his consciousness. Okay, deal. Put it put it on your watch. I have. George okay, Clooney yeah. I'm just gonna download. Hey, little Sorab, you're gonna get a new sibling. <laughs> Downloads George Clooney AI. Yay. <laughs> if there's not enough room in there, will you kill me? <laughs> no, of course not. <laughs> There's plenty of room to go around for three consciences. I was, well, no, I was thinking I make a George Clooney AI, and then I download, like, that consciousness into, like, uh, I don't know, like, a little a robot or something I can have around. That's that's know, the like, G like, in like Chat GPT. Like a parent GPT. or something. I can so, make George Clooney a, yeah. Chat George so, PT. I know what to do. So I'm going to make a cybernetic parrot, a cyborg parrot, and then I'm gonna down. I have. You already get, said I have the George Clooney AI. I'm gonna just put that in the parrot. So now we have a cybernetic George Clooney parrot that can talk to us. What have Ollie I done? Clooney. What the? Isn't aren't like uh, no? Isn't like man? I love it when I'm tired. And genetics I... like banned in Star Starfleet. No, yes, no, 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 this, it's this not is. 
it's not genetic engineering. What it is, is it's it's closer to necromancy. You see, that's uh, not what I'm doing <laughs> is I'm taking that, that uh, sounds I'm taking awfully a parrot, close to eugenics. I'm taking a parrot, which is dead, uh, and I'm sticking it full of cybernetic parts, so it's basically a robot. And then I'm downloading a uh, a George Clooney uh, text to speech script into it, which so when it comes out of its vocal cords, it's George Clooney. Is In his that... defense, eugenics generally relies upon using a living subject. Yes, you said I didn't. Uh, you know, it's technically a corpse, <laughs> and I'm putting a robe. I'm shoving a uh, a robot into it. So it's more like an animatronic, you know. I'll only keep it up for maybe five nights. Who knows? Yep. Now, anyway, we've, now we've, we've re yep, we're definitely tripled. Okay, <laughs> getting right back to, to the actual heist happening. Okay. Yeah. Next time, consider Robin Williams. He would have been more entertaining. Uh, I would have Nicholas Cage. Uh, mm -hmm. No. All right. So, Dude, calls doing? over. Other than George Clooney bullshit, what are you doing now? Captain, do we or do we not bear mace the planet? <laughs> bear well, mace the planet. And now it's time to set course for Gehenna. All right. Hey. Oh, do we have the thing set up yet? For thing. Means the thing. The thing. For the shields. Yes. The um the was it the. The cloaking device. Yeah. Yes, the mask of the Red Death. Oh, that was that. We were able to do that immediately. That's how we escaped. All right. Yeah. Good. Let's do this then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I was under the impression it was already active. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, apparently it is. I just. Didn't All right, know that. man. Let's take it nice and slow. Warp thirteen. <laughs> and the ship explodes. Turn, Turn it up to eleven. Turn it up to eleven. All right. So, Gehenna is 25 light years away. All right, so what speed would you like to go? We did all that math at 8. Yeah, warp 8, two light years a day, so it'll take uh, 12 and a half days so to get I, there. I would say warp. Eight, eight and a half. Well, eight and a half, roll. If you do eight and a half, you got to do a roll every day to see if the engine's overheat. Okay, eight. Yes. There we go. But when we get closer to Gehenna, I would say that we need to pull back to seven. <clears throat> yeah, I think it's seven. Because um, wouldn't they find it suspicious how there's a our Destian ship going warp eight, where no other our Destian ship has ever had that can kind of capability. Well, that is not true. Uh, some of the other ships that are pursuing us earlier, uh, when you weren't here, Matt, they were going warp eight. Oh, they were. Okay, yes. never mind then. So just warp eight, make it so. Okay. All right. Let me pull it up again. I'll, let me give you a refresher on one important thing. Let's see here. Uh oh. Uh, so I just want to just how the uh, how the thing works, like our ability to be detected. Let's see. Uh... So refresher for them, new information. New information. For me. Got it. Okay. Let's. Before we really get into our Destian space, I'm going to message Terra, too. Okay. Well, we're right now, we're on the line. Yeah, between... so, like, immediately, basically. <laughs> okay, so we're invisible outside of two light years. Inside that, we appear as a red ship. When we get in within a quarter of a light year they can say, hey, wait a minute. That doesn't look like a red ship. 
So it's gray. So maybe what we should do is get about uh, two and a half light years out from Gehenna, and then send the Ardestian ship in. I like this idea. Wait. It won't go as fast, but we'll be close enough that that won't be a, a, an issue anymore. Okay. So yeah, outside. So outside of two light years, totally invisible. Between two light years and a quarter of a light year, we look like a red ship. But, um, if I remember correctly, it would take eight days at two light years for the Ar Ar Ardesian <sighs> ship to get to Gehenna no. and back. No. It goes half a light year a day. I mean, at cruising speed, but it can go faster than that. No, cruising speed was a quarter of a light year. Uh, sorry, are you talking about the... Sh the... Okay, so, yeah, if you're going to take a ship, it has to be the cargo ship. Uh, I, I was looking at it. The, the shuttle, the, it requires 15 meter long sections of densite for the rods. And the cargo ship is long enough, but the shuttlecraft is not. Oh, okay. So you'll have to take the cargo ship in order to pick it up. Unless right. you took the so Lexington how, itself. How long would it take the cargo ship to get from two and a half light years out to Gehenna and back? All right, let me look that up again. So five five light year round trip. All right, so the Ardestian cargo ship, uh, cruising speed warp five. It can do warp six safely. Warp six is. A half a light year a day. All right, so they have 10 days. There goes our buffer. Well, <laughs> I mean, okay. So if we get to, if we get to, if we get to about uh, one light year, three quarters of a light year out, as long as we don't get close enough that they can they can spot that we're not what we think what that we claim to be, and then send well, the cargo ship from there. Is there any if like we... space debris we can hide around? I was, my thought process had been, if we go a light year out, they'll think we're on Dresden, but they won't be able to see, and it'll take two days, or it would be four days round trip. Right. That still gives us enough of our buffer time to get to where we need to go. Okay. Sure. Okay. All right. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I'm going to call Tara to... I'm going to uh, try to speak to... Uh, president. Okay. Right, let's see here. Uh, hold on, I gotta look up something real quick. All right, <laughs> so you're going to call up the uh, president's office, right? Yeah, I didn't get to any of that. I'm sorry, say it again. What? Hmm? What's happening? Wait, am I cutting it, out or something? You two hear it, each other. It was, it was breaking up really bad, so I didn't actually hear anything that you said. For okay, sorry. Day. So you're calling the office of the president, right? Yeah, that's the goal. Okay. So you're going to call up, and it's going to go, Office of the President, this is Margaret speaking. Hi, Margaret. It's uh, Lieutenant Commander Sorab of the Lexington. How's oh, it going today? Oh, the Lexington. How are you guys doing? I hear 
there's just all kinds of talk about you all around. Everyone's like, oh, Lexington this, Lexington that. Like, I mean, you guys are real celebrities around here. Oh. Well, <laughs> um, I hope it's all good. Oh, sweetie, even if it wasn't, I wouldn't tell you. Fair enough. I ha- um I have a bit of a update for the president, if I could get through to him. Oh, really? Okay, let me see. Um, uh, he's in for his massage right now. Is it really important? Because he hates when that gets interrupted. Well, tell him what. Tell you what. Um, let him know that, if you could, that we have arranged an opportunity to have a diplomatic meeting with the Lestrans, the yellow aliens, and uh, to ha- have him let me contact me at his earliest convenience to discuss the details of that. Really? The yellows? Mm, I didn't know they could even communicate with us. That's... <laughs> wow, you've been some busy bees out there, haven't you guys? Did Sora do? just put, like... <laughs> intergalactic piece on the back burner for a guy's massage no no no, no. i i am letting him you're letting I, him I am, get his massage it's like i just I tell letting, them about this no, after I, the... I am letting him inter- interrupt his massage is what i'm doing like she tells him now hey i don't know if you want to interrupt your massage for this but this is what we've heard and then he can be like stop everything yeah okay <laughs> What if it? What if he does wait out the massage? What if he was like I mean, really? What if he like, like what, fell asleep hour? and no one had the courage to wake him up? I'm I'm gonna trust that I'll be hearing from him within the hour. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so she's gonna say. What was that? Excuse me. Sorry, my voice is dying. <clears throat> she's gonna say okay sweetie is there anything else I can do for you today uh not today thank you very much alright you have a blessed one sweetheart you too thank Click. you two minutes later you get a call yep. coming in <laughs> <laughs> that's right yes Hey, so you're going to see the president. Uh, you see, he's got his shirt buttoned up, but, like, he did it, like, one button off. Just, yeah. like, just like looking – like, he like his hair is part – like, you can still see that there's some, like, oil still on his skin that's, like, starting to stain his shirt, like, from the massage. Mm-hmm. Just, just, like – say, you did what? We've managed to arrange diplomatic communications with the Lestrans. Okay. They would like to have a sit down. I have multiple questions. So first of all, you can talk to them now. Uh, Yes, we cracked their language. Um, We can actually probably send you the files for the uh, Universal Translator for that. Okay. Um. Man, I'm going to need another massage after this. Okay. Um, uh, to, he's going to sigh, hit a button up on the screen. Now it's going to be side by side him and his sister. Okay. So he's going to say... Captain Blevins? Yes. Uh, Lieutenant Commander Sorab. So I hear that you have established diplomatic communications... With the yellows. Correct. Son of a bitch, you did it. Their formal title is the Lestrans. Lestrans. You'll, I... you'll want to keep that in mind when you're communicating that. With I, them. I will. I will. I will do that. <laughs> we will do that. Like, yes. Yes. He goes. Yes. We. We. We will do that. I'll put out a formal, formal, formal diplomatic. I don't know. Whatever. I'll, I'll, it's gonna take. It's like fifty something years of of trying to undo that. Call them the yellows, but we'll, we'll we'll get there. If we're gonna be negotiating with them, we probably shouldn't call them by a color. Um, right. Okay. 
Right. Earth history tells you that. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to go there. Uh, <laughs> so, do you have any more details besides that? Uh, like where and when and like? Yes. Okay. So the the plan is uh, the the target is seventy days from now, so that they have time to make arrangements and travel, and we have time to make arrangements and travel. Um, two locations have been offered as possible sites. Uh, the Lord Cladu is currently verifying which one he can actually get his council on board with. Um, I will I will tell him the two locations. I'll tell him uh, start this location just above the Archer's Nebula. Nebula is obviously uh, going to be the easier to arrange, but the more difficult to convince his council to go with because it's so deep in your territory. This other location uh, between Blevins and Berlin is going to be easier to convince his council to go along with um, and obviously would have to involve a, a all sides standing down, but would involve them convincing the Farins, the Blues, uh, to also stand down. And so he's checking into which one of those is more viable right now. But the plan would be 70 days in one of, in one of those two locations. Uh, they are willing to treat the Lexington as a neutral ground. That is, uh, they would be viewing us as mediators, but the conversation would be between you and them. Uh, the, the terms that they, they are expecting that the objective of Terra 2 is to make peace and get assistance in making the wormholes program operate so that the humans can go home so you're trying to get the people that have been at our throats for longer than I've been alive to help us leave damn I wouldn't have thought that would I would have thought this day would come <laughs> Well, okay. Um, they do, you may recall, have a vested interest in... In us buggering off, yes. As, as yeah. Getting out of their neighborhood. Oh, I can understand it. Uh, yeah, it makes sense. It, it's just hard to picture these nameless, faceless people that we've been fighting for generations now as people that would be willing to help Funny how that happens. Yeah. So of those two locations, uh, obviously the location A uh, between between Felix and Verona would be easy enough for you to manage. Um, how difficult do you think it would be to convince the uh, your forces at in, involved on Stalingrad to stand down for the purposes of this negotiate of this meeting? Well, I Presumably mean, this isn't to be on call. This isn't rule by vote. If if they're told to stand down, they will stand down. The question is, if they start shooting back, well, all hell breaks loose again. So, of course, there our people aren't going to shoot if they don't shoot, because that's okay. how military hierarchy is supposed to work. Right. Um, Do you believe you could have a diplomatic team to either of those locations in seventy days? Easily. Okay. I mean, we could be there in a month, probably. Right. Do you have any further concerns that, because I'm supposed to be talking to them in a few days, Lord, uh, I'm supposed to be talking to Lord Cladu in a couple of days, uh, to find out which location he's able to convince his diplomatic corps to go to, um, safely. Do you have any other concerns that I should raise at that time? Off the top of my head, no, but I will likewise need to be talking to my council, my people, about the same subject. Because, again, this is – I was in a massage five minutes ago, so I'm, I'm a little a little caught off, off guard by this one. So, uh, <clears throat> uh, there, sorry, okay. yeah. Well, you, you make the arrangements you need to make and then, and then contact me at your, at, as soon as you can, and we will see what we can – coordinate between you and, and Lord Cladu. Uh, there is one other matter, which is that we 
have identified a source of Denzite that we're trying to grab on our way back. A source um, of me, 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 Gehenna? I think it's better for everybody at this point if we don't go into detail. I but, can accept that. <laughs> um, but we believe that we have, we found a source of Denzite that we can actually gather some Denzite from. If this is successful, we want to drop it off at the wormhole station before we go to this meeting. Can you... If... I'm telling, I'm telling you this now so that if we get the Densite and then I message you quickly telling you that we have it, um, could you make sure that the wormhole station is ready to receive it and immediately put it to use? I mean, certainly we'll make sure that they that they know uh, to be expecting a shipment, but I'd imagine that I don't imagine they'd be doing anything else. I mean, literally all they need right now is the Denzite, so I'm sure they're sitting around on their hands just waiting for it. Excellent. I just, I don't, I didn't want to create a situation in which we show up and they're not expecting it and therefore not ready to receive it. That's fair enough. Very well. Well, we'll be in communication. Thank you very much. So, uh, Captain Blevling will say, oh, uh, before you go, um, mm -hmm. one important question. <clears throat> Do you think you can trust this Lord Cladoo? Diplomacy is all about convincing people you trust them more than you actually do. And that's a fair statement, but I didn't answer the question. <laughs> I... I believe that... I believe that they have a vested interest in seeing this war end. I believe that they have... I believe that they have a strategic reason to be the front runners of making peace, especially if it means that a lot of worlds that they've been eyeing up suddenly become available and they have first grab at it. Ah, so you're incentivizing them. Very good. <laughs> yeah, no need to... It's a lot easier to trust someone when you can give them something they want, isn't it? Yes. I like it. Crafty. All right, that's all I've got. Brother, anything else from you? Again, in formal settings, it's president. But no, 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 no. I believe, I believe that that handles everything. So, all right, so Rab Lexington, keep doing God's work out there. I guess I don't know how else to say that, but just yeah. keep us in keep us in the loop. We'll let you know as soon as we have any uh, decisions on our end for this whole proposed way forward. Excellent. Thank you very much. And all over. Okay. And I, I know I kind of did a lot in this episode, but I don't imagine that I'm going to be leading much in the next couple episodes. <laughs> this was a very diplomatic, heavy episode, yes. But when we get to the actual mission with with Gehenna, I, I, it's it's going to be a lot more of a team effort. Oh yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, 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 yes. So, that's probably the perfect place to end it, because it is right at 11. All right. I know that, I know we got lots of sleepy people around here, so, that yeah. That could be 12 with day, daylight savings time. Oh, well, it's, yes. it's good for you. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, that really important thing we always got to do, especially after this last weekend when we had such... Everyone else, not me, unfortunately, had such a great time with Extra Life. Tim, we'd love to hear more about it. Yeah, so uh, Extra Life was, was great. We had a blast. Uh, we did manage to uh, finish the In Memoriam story and, I believe, send off the characters in a way that we were all pretty pleased with. In, uh, for all the characters that were there, at the very least. Um, so that, that was great. Um, we did raise, managed to raise some money for, for the hospitals. So we're very pleased with that, but we are still raising. So we fundraise all year round for extra life. So you can still go to our team page and make a donation. It'll apply to this year's, uh, fundraising efforts. 
uh, through the end of the year, through December 31st. So please go there and consider making a donation uh, to one of the hospitals that we have represented there on the team. We have San Diego's uh, Brady Children's Hospital. We have Buffalo's Oshai. We have Norfolk's uh, Children's Hospital of the King's Daughters. We have Bay State Hospital Children's Hospital. And we have uh, Boston Children's Hospital, all represented on that team. So go and uh, help us help the kids by making a donation. Every cent you donate goes directly to the hospital. Uh, there's no overhead on that, and it doesn't come to us at all. So please, you know, consider making a donation and helping out the kids today. Um, we do have some, we are working already on next year's event. So keep an eye on that. You can join Discord and see some of the conversation happening around that. Uh, but I will tell you that the plan does involve your help. Um, basically, we're going to be playing a campaign in which the gods of the D&D setting are very active. And they're active by way of you, the viewers, playing the gods. Uh, there'll be more details about that coming out soon. But, you know, keep an eye on out for that. Okay. That's going to be fun. So, all right, yeah. so a point for everyone, even though I just realized the only person who did an actual role based on the sheet was Matt. Everything else was just straight-up conversation. Hey, Happens I tried sometimes. To, I rolled for George Clooney. But you didn't actually use your <laughs> sheet. You just, like I said, it wasn't, it was just something. So y'all no, get a I point to be, to be used when you actually have something to use it on. <laughs> But I guarantee you next session there will be a lot more rolling happening. So, mm. Got to be a lot of moving parts happening. So, All right, guys. Sorry that... Uh, sorry I didn't give most of you guys more to do. Uh, Chris, Coinless, sorry. Hopefully next time I, I'll make it up to you. I promise. I promise. I'm okay. sure you will. I'm okay. sure you will. <laughs> no, I've, I've got some ideas for... Uh, for... Uh, yeah, you'll see. You'll see. It, it, it'll, it'll guarantee that there's a lot to be done for everyone. So anyhow, you get to see that next time. So just just, just anticipate that. Although you won't be here next week, will you, Chris? No, i am taking my mom to a uh, grandkids concert. Oof. Okay. Well, it is the season. It is the season. We'll I'll make it work one way or another. Whoever is or is not here, it'll be fine. But yeah, so yeah, that's... Thanksgiving in my nub. Yeah. Thanks. Well, we're definitely not two weeks from now because that's Thanksgiving. Because uh, mm. I'll be having people over. That'll be fun. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yes. Cool. I'm house sitting, and I'm actually going to be hosting a, a Thanksgiving for the first time in my entire life. Nice. It's gonna be fun. It's a Thanksgiving for misfit toys. Anyone around here who has got nowhere else to go for Thanksgiving? So. <laughs> <It'll be fun. laughs> so. Uh, anyhow, that matters absolutely nothing for what's going on right now. So I'm going to let you all go to bed, do whatever the heck else you want to do with your evening. So with that, I will say good night. Live long and prosper. Live long and prosper. See y'all. Yeah.